Hello everyone, I'm David from the Package Registry and um, today we are going to uh, discuss the Google Artifact Registry integration. Uh, with me, we have Joao from the Container Registry and Rahul from, well, the Package Stage, I guess, <laughs> the front end for the front end side. Um, so yeah, I guess the first thing, uh, I want to go through is the approach. So I did uh, yeah some like a small technical analysis, and yeah I guess I aim for a too high goal <laughs> to manage too many things. Um, I think we are all more or less in agreement to on the first version on the first version to support one single set of credentials and one repository of from from the artifact registry but um think about supporting multiple repositories uh yeah i'm pretty convinced that we are going to have this need um due to the other formats that we have in the repositories and we will have users saying hey i have docker images and and Maven packages and NPM and APT. Can we can we have everything in a in a single GitLab project? So um, yeah, I think we should aim for that uh, first version. Uh, am I accurate with that scope? Yeah, I think so. Uh, there are a few things that that we can do. For example, y yesterday. I was we were talking about uh, the environment variables uh, yep. so probably it, it's not a good idea to provide an environment variable which includes uh, the repository name uh, because if we are going to add support for multiple repository names uh, then we will have to let the users decide what's the target repository, repository name for a push and a pull uh, so maybe we should just fill the other parameters like the project ID and, and location uh, and leave that part outside. So yeah, there are a few things that we can do to make sure that uh, we can add support for multiple repositories without breaking changes. Yeah. Without yeah. changing environment variables, without changing APIs. Yeah, uh, what I want to avoid is, okay, receive the need of multiple repositories. And now we are kind of stuck or blocked with an implementation and we have so like so big barriers that we need to work to towards lowering them um be it i don't know data migration or uh, or something if we can uh, at least think about supporting multiple repositories from the start that would be nice um okay uh so then the next question uh, yeah, I think we discussed where to put the, yeah, I call it the GitLab border. It's like from, from which point we start controlling things on the GitLab side. So we have a kind of a hierarchy. We have uh, Google projects. Each project has many repositories and each repository has many uh, artifacts. So where do we put the, the Google, the Google, the GitLab uh, border? So uh, there was this idea of, um, yeah, let users just fill a list of uh, projects and we dynamically get the list of repositories. That sounds um, great, but yeah, as I said, as I commented, I think I would leave that for a follow-up rather than the first version and start with uh, simple things like they need to provide a project and a repository that would be the first version and then if we want to open up and they just provide a list of google projects yeah why not that, but that would be the second version and i would do that when all the formats of the repositories are supported yeah uh, i think that sounds good to me i think your explanation there uh, was uh... Uh, good and we were I we were I was discussing where we put that like boundary and yep. so I think in agreement there we can go with uh, like having the repository as the layer 
the okay. Idea. Okay, that, that works then. Um, so now digging a bit deeper in the implementation, we have this uh, part in GitLab projects, which is called project integrations. And so, well, logically, that's where we want to put our settings, right? <laughs> of the artifact registry. Um, the issue, it's not an issue, it's more a challenge. The challenge I see is that how this part is implemented, it's it's like a super small framework where you have a integration object and you have actually like a name, like some kind of common data, and then you have uh, a props. And that, that property is, it's a simple hash. And so you put whatever you want inside of that hash. So, you can put like URLs, API keys, whatever. Um, the challenge I see is that, well, we are going to put the credentials in there because it's only one set, but for the repository, we need to put a array of at least, uh, I guess, strings that would be the repository names. And then the problem is that I'm not sure if, um, if an array value in those props is supported in the in the UI. Because right now the props are the, it's like the persisted field in the database. And then on top of that, you have many small helper functions that will help you to describe how the fields within props are displayed in the UI. Uh, so you can say, hey, in the props, I have a, um, for example, for the, the um, the Google project ID. You can you can say, hey, in the props I have a I have a project ID, and that's a string, and it needs to be displayed like this. And so then the UI will understand that okay, I have a props object, and inside those props, I have a project ID that I need to display. The problem with the repositories is that if we want to support multiple repositories, we will need to support. Hey, I have a a key that is named repositories in the props and the value is an array of string. And I'm not sure that this is supported. Um, I'm in discussion with um, the team behind this small uh, like framework or well, integration object. And we'll see, we'll see how we can support that, those multiple repositories. If we knew that it was only one repository, it's easy. It's like a simple, hey, we have props and inside the props you have a repository name or repository and that's a string field and that's it. But if we want to prepare things for multiple repositories, then we need within a, an array somewhere. Um, yeah, so I'm in discussions with them um yeah hopefully we will have some some answers uh, I, I even i mean i'm even exploring we have the integration project which is a persisted project i uh, even wondering if we could have a like a side table that would hold uh, additional settings and this way you can you can hold like uh, the repository names or something like that but it seems that uh, the really the recommended way for them is really having everything in that props uh, field. So yeah, I'm still in discussion with them, and I might I might be missing how to do this properly. So uh, perhaps there is a there's a a way within this integration uh, object. Um, so we might have or not some front end work on those settings if everything is supported by the integration object um yeah i guess a lot of front-end work is already implemented and so uh, that would be a, a good news the additional nice thing about this um, integration object is that they have a test feature or a test aspect meaning that you have the integration uh, screen you fill all the details and then you have a test button. So you can click test and the, the backend will try to contact the, the external service. So we could use that for the, for the first version too, so that they can, users can verify their, 
uh, credentials. Yeah. yeah, we've got also used that to make sure the repository is of type Docker before yeah. um, for persisting. But but it's uh, from what I saw, it's really a test button. Like it it has to be uh, interacted by users. Perhaps there mm -hmm. is a way okay. to, to trigger the test before persisting. Uh, okay. Yeah, that could be possible, I guess. Um, the other challenge is the the JSON key. So, <laughs> so um, Google, we, we are going to use a service account and uh, and the related key. And that key is actually a JSON structure. It's not uh, like a, an API key, which is like a very long string. It's, it's a JSON structure. And the challenge here is that we need the JSON form, like the string that is the JSON structure for the official client. We need that. And we need the base64 version of that key for the CI CD variables. Uh, um, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to put a JSON structure as a as a, an environment variable. Uh, I'm concerned that this could bring some issues. Whereas with a base64 string, it's just a giant string, and that that's okay for for environment variables. And and so there is a way for the the Docker login command to send um, to Google to say, hey, here is my key, but it's encoded in base sixty four, so uh, we can use both. So the challenge is that we need to ask users to fill the integration settings with the JSON key, but we will need we will need the base sixty four version of that. Um, and ideally, we want to uh, encode in base64 only once and not each time that we are going to set the CI CD variables. So, yeah, we probably we need to store it in the props of the integration object too. Uh, but that's another callback that we will need to uh, implement. Um, okay. That's uh that's the like lowest level <laughs> i would go i will not go into more details uh otherwise that would be like writing code <laughs> um i guess yeah is there any questions on this integration those are it's like the the settings side of the of the integration oh and the other thing about using the integration object is that yeah, I guess pretty much the permissions are already handled, like only maintainers can access the project integrations. So we wouldn't need to add a new new permission for that. Uh, so yeah, if we can reuse that part, that would be great. All right. Yeah, even if even yeah. if we, we can't, it's probably it would probably be useful to use that for as long as we have a single repository. Yep. Uh, and you could change later because we already have a lot of new stuff to, to build. Yeah. And, and doing that, it's probably not a, a breaking change in any way. So, yeah, uh, it could be possible that to handle multiple repositories, we need a, a side table that we will link to the integration object, a bit like we do in the package registry, where you have the the package table, that's the common fields for all formats. And then we have dedicated tables for additional informations. Um, and so, yeah, that could work so that the first version is only the integration project, uh, the integration object with the props um, um, field. And then to support multiple ones, we extend that with a dedicated table that, that could work. But I'm still in discussion with them. And actually, once we are done with the technical analysis, I'd like to ping one of uh, the member of that team so that they can look at what we want to do. <laughs> this is to avoid on DMR <laughs> having things like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> this is all wrong. <laughs> um, uh okay and actually one of them is a graphql expert so that could be useful in the mr reviews too uh yes 
all right uh so the other aspects uh yeah one of them uh i found i guess we we were discussing it uh, yesterday with joel it was about the the graph creel thing so in the current analysis i thought hey well we will implement a a way to get the repository of a project and then a way to get the docker images of that repository and and if we are looking to support multiple formats, I thought, well, perhaps having a GraphQL query that is get Docker images is not such a good idea. What would be better is have a query that is get artifacts from the repository. And then that GraphQL will return a um, abstract object. And so depending on the type of the repository, we will have a dedicated type. We have the same thing in the package metadata type where the, the metadata type doesn't exist. What we have is we have NPM metadata type, Nugget metadata type. And so depending on which package type we have, traversing to the metadata type, we return the, the right concrete type. So we could do the same here, have a get artifacts query and that query will return the right objects depending on the type. So, well, obviously on the first version, we, we, we are going to only support Docker images. So if the repository is something else, well, we either return a, an error or an empty result. Perhaps an error is, is a better thing. Uh, but then as we start implementing the other types, it's just a matter of adding the concrete type and the GraphQL query will not change more or less the result would change but not the the query itself and the, and the inputs so it's a, it's a bit of more work in the sense that we need to implement the abstract type and then the docker image concrete type but i think it's it's worth it because then the query we we are not going to touch it to implement the other repository formats Okay. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, uh, so I, I left a comment um, like based on your discussion yesterday. I just left, I've left a comment. Um, okay. In that same issue. And uh, yeah, I was trying to envision where if we can validate when we are adding the uh, repository, if it's a type, uh, it has the format type Docker, um, then um, in the UI for the artifactory registry, we can just have the Docker images list page and the detail page. Uh, we don't need to show the list of repository page at all in the first instance. And in the next next iteration, we can have the list of repositories and those can have the filter, like filter from, um, and those will already be filtered by Docker because when you're adding it, um, in the integration settings, um, it's validated that it's a Docker format. Uh, yeah. Well, we will still need to handle issues because, uh, yeah, as Joao suggested yesterday, <laughs> we could have this crazy situation where someone uh, destroys a repository and recreate the, another one with the same name, but in a different format mm -hmm. and doesn't change the integrations on the GitLab side. And so, yeah, we might need, I guess it's it's better if the backend still verifies that we have the right format when we ask for the um, for the Docker images. Actually, the, the official client will end up in an error. If you ask, like the official client, the method is really get Docker images. That's the name of the function. Mm -hmm. If you call that on a repository that is on format, I don't know, NPM, that will end up in an error. So it's it's not like we need to verify it. Like we will get an error and we need to handle that. Yeah, I think we need to still, um, yeah. If, if, it's, um, um, if it's required that you need to call the format thing, yeah. um, that'll, that, that'll actually scale better when we add like multiple formats as well, right? So 
I think having that support in the back end is probably useful. Yeah. And I'm trying to think from a front end perspective to keep like the most uh, like minimal implementation. Yeah. And not have like an extra page. Um, so if you have like one repository, we show the repository, like the list of Docker images. Um, if it fails, then uh, you will handle it on the back end and show like no Docker images or something. Yep. I know the uh, API will fail with an error, but probably you'll handle that with a, like an empty array. And then we'll show that um, in the integration, they can probably test their connection or whatever. Yep. And just yep. uh, uh, check that uh, it has the right format. If not, we'll show some error and then ask them to update it or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so in so in the first version, we'll just um, have the Docker images list page and the detail page, and the integrations can have yeah. the single credential. And so I, I you want to avoid the page where there's an a single row, a single repository. leak, which is the yeah, single repository. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more <laughs> click. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> We can put a small message there, almost there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that can work, I guess. Yeah, that can work. Uh, so we could have like the query to list artifacts. We could accept a project global ID directly. Uh, and from the project, the backend can get the integration, get the repository, and get the Docker images and return that. Yeah, yeah correct, <laughs> correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, so um, the front end will call the get artifacts um, yeah. API, and then yeah, uh, yeah for that and then, project. And then I guess have a one query for get. Docker image because when you when you will yep. have the result of get artifacts you will know that those are Docker images and so yep. to get the details we will need another GraphQL query which will yep. be get Docker image and actually the backend can call get Docker images and get an error because before that we need to know which well it depends I get I, I guess on the first version we could call get docker images on the repository without checking it but on the version where we support multiple formats we will need to know okay this repository which format it is is it docker npm or maven so we will probably need to call the get repository details there is a method to get the, the information of a repository and so the backend will need to uh, handle that. But that's okay for the first version, I guess. We can directly call get Docker images. And if there is an error, just either return an empty array as you suggested, or we could also return an error so that the front end can display, hey, yeah, uh, useful there, there, was a, there was an issue. Check your uh, project integration. Settings or something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, that works for me. Uh, okay. And then. Yeah. Um, yeah, the other aspect was CICD variables, but I'm not sure if there is something to discuss there. Or I guess we can discuss it in the blueprint directly. Uh, it was mainly the approach and the, the GraphQL and the project integration I wanted to discuss today. Um, okay, so if we are all okay with that, I will update the analysis. Um, I will also uh, get the answers from the uh, for this integration object and, and that props field. And uh, yeah, update the analysis with that. And I guess I will ping you for a, a second round of feedback. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, like we see the, the end of this analysis, and then I will port all the main points to the blueprint MR so that we have everything in a, in a single place. Does that work for you? All right. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So next week, uh, if we can have that done next week, then we can ask the product designer to, to review as well and start uh, drafting yeah. uh, the designs. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one. Uh, that's something I wanted to start with, and I completely forgot. In the analysis, the front end part is really not super accurate because there are many UX questions that 
I don't know, we don't have the answers yet. So it's a bit hard to figure out uh, what what will be exactly the front end changes. But uh, yeah, I guess what we, we discussed today is uh, detailed enough to put that in the, in the analysis. Okay, uh, all right. We are a bit of the time. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, I will uh, update the analysis and ping you on on that uh, uh, when it's done. Okay, thanks for thanks attending, and well, see you in the issue, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a great day. See Bye. You, bye.